Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do a very quick follow-up on my last video because I posted about the technique on Cloudy Nights and people rightfully commented that I went a little bit too fast on how I derived the pixel math expressions that allow me to extract the H-alpha and O3 signal from the data acquired with my one-shot color camera when it's coupled with a dual narrowband filter. So today we're going to do, go through that process in great detail. Hopefully it will clarify things and then you'll be able to apply that to your own camera model. So let's get started. All right, so let's start with these three equations, which I showed you last time. These were obtained just by reading the spectral sensitivity graph of my camera. If we look at number three, we can obtain H alpha as a function of the red channel and the O3 signal. Then we can replace H alpha in the equation number two, and then we obtain the O3 signal as a function of the green and red channel. And if we do the same thing in one, we obtain the value of the O3 signal as a function of the blue and red channel. All right, so far so good. Now let's try these expressions in PixInsight on real data, and there's gonna be some surprises. Uh, I'm gonna show you what to look for, and this will allow you to tune some of the parameters, specifically this one here, this 0.2, and then this one. All right, so let's hop in PixInsight and take a look. All right, so we're in PixInsight, and as you can see, I've already extracted my red, green, and blue channels. I showed you how to do this last time. Let's minimize these. And let's try the first expression, which gives us the, the value of the O3 signal as a function of the green and red channel. All right, so I have a pixel math process instance here, which is configured to create a new image with this name color space is grayscale, and here's the equation or the expression that we saw in the previous slide. Let's try it out and see what we get. Of course, we're in linear mode, so we apply a screen transfer function. And surprise, surprise, we get this. Doesn't look too good, right? Uh, we have some black clipping. What can possibly be causing this? Well, there's only one thing that can cause this, and it is this value here. Obviously, this value must be lowered. To what? I have absolutely no idea. And that's where the trial and error starts to come in. All right, so maybe 0 0.15. Let's try, see what we get. That's a little bit better, right? But it's not quite there. All right, so you're gonna try different values. Um, I settled on 0 0.1 because I think that was uh, pretty much the highest value that would not give me any artifact and the background was nicely uniform. So that was the first uh, pixel math expression that I tuned. All right, good. So we can keep this here. And now I have another pixel math process instance here, which is configured to give us the O3 signal as a function of the blue and red channel. And that's the second expression that we saw in the previous slide. Let's try it. Again, we apply screen cross function. Looks good, no artifact. Doesn't mean that we're done though. Let's see if we can maybe increase this a little bit. Why would we need to increase this? Because you see the background needs to be as uniform as possible. What that means is that we want to remove as much of the hydrogen clouds that are visible. Remember, there's no O3 signal at all here. It's pure H-alpha. And H-alpha is mostly in the red channel. So let's try different values, maybe 0 0.1. See what we get. Ah, now we're starting to see some artifacts. So let's lower it. I think the value I settled on was 0 0.08. Let's try. You can probably hear um, my computer fan running. All right, this looks great. 
And these are the two O3 images that we are going to be using. Now, one thing to note is that the green channel has twice, at least twice as much signal coming from the O3 wavelengths than the blue channel. So we are going to combine these two things in a very specific way. So let me show you how to do this. All right, so like I said, the green channel has a lot more O3 signal than the blue channel. And that the reason is because if you look at the bare matrix, for every blue pixel, there are two green pixels. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. The other thing is if we go back to the spectral sensitivity graph, the it's about 90% of the O3 signal uh, is led through by the uh, the green uh, filter, but only about 50% gets led through by the blue filter in the bare matrix. So our final expression to in order to get the, the value of the O3 signal is two, because there's again, two green pixel for every blue pixel times 90%, 0.9, times the O3 signal as a function of the green and red channel, plus 50%, 0.5, times the O3 signal as a function of the blue and red channel. And then we have to normalize this, so divided by 2.3. Why 2.3? Because 2 times 0.9 is 1.8, plus 0.5 is 2.3. So we normalize this. And this is our final equation or expression. Of course, you have to um, expand this and this here using the the expressions that we saw in the previous slide. And then H alpha is this expression which we saw earlier. Looks good, right? Let's try it one more time. And this way we're going to do it in an optimized manner in PixInsight using what's called a process container. All right, so now we're back in PixInsight. Obviously, whenever I want to extract the H alpha and O3 signal from one of my images, I'm not going to go through all of those pixel math uh, expressions. Uh, it would get a little bit too complicated. So what I did is I actually created a little icon here on my workspace, which I named extract O3 H alpha. And that is what's called a process container instance. So what does that do? Well, there's basically multiple process instances within one um, process, if you will. So the first one is channel extraction. Pretty straightforward, right? So we want to name the resulting images R, G, and B. And then we have our two pixel math processes. And the first one has this equation here, right? That's the, the, that's the expression that we saw earlier to get the O3 signal. And this is the second expression, which gives us the H alpha um, uh, signal. So let me show you how I usually use this. So I open this and then I simply drag the blue triangle to my RGB image. And then I'll let it do its thing. It takes a few seconds. And I get an image named HA which is H alpha, as you can probably guess, and then one named O3. And there you have it. So that's usually how I do uh, things. I can then toss these three images. I don't really need them. Uh, and then we can process these images further before we recombine them. Let me briefly show you also how I recombine them because I think I skipped that a small detail in the previous video. So you'll see it's pretty simple. All right, so the last thing I wanted to cover is how to recombine the HA and O3 images that we generated. All right, so we're much further along here in the in the process. We're no longer in linear mode. We've delinearized our images. We've processed them pretty heavily, like we did deconvolution, noise reduction. Uh, in this case, I even blurred the background a little bit to make the nebula pop a little bit more. All right, so we have these two images named HA and O3, and I want to recombine them into an RGB color image. There's many, many ways you can do this, right? If you search the internet, you'll find many methods. I'm gonna show you mine, very simple. 
go to Process Explorer, open Pixel Math, click on the little icon here to reset the process, and then uncheck the Use a Single RGBK Expression. All right, so for the red channel, we're going to put 100% of the HS signal. In the blue channel, we're going to put 100% of the O3 signal. And in the green channel, we're going to put 90% of the O3 signal. And we're going to add 10% of the HA signal. There's a reason why people usually do this. And it's because hydrogen actually emits in the blue-green part of the uh, spectrum in an array called H-beta. But it, it glows relatively faintly in that part of the spectrum. But that's what that um, uh, this component here is supposed to represent. All right, make sure you select the Create New Image. Color space should be RGB color. Click on the little square. And let's see what we get. There you go. Now we have our RGB color image of the nebula. Next step would be to apply some curve, curve transformation, more noise reduction if needed, and then you integrate the RGB stars and you're done. Okay, so hopefully this really clarified how I obtain the pixel math expression for my camera. Hopefully you'll be able to do the same on your own camera. And uh, yeah, that's it. Until next time. Thank you for watching.